We all would have read, would have heard, and even used this one term named average in our day-to-day -day life, you know, a lot of time. Well, if you have used it, but you don't know that why you use this term, then this video tutorial is about that. We'll discuss what's average and why do we use it. So before moving, you know, uh, entering into the discussion, I want to tell you that in order to calculate average, we actually have three tools. The first one is mean, the second one is median, and the third one is mode. Mean, median, and mode, these are the three tools using which we calculate average well, it depends upon the situation whether you will use only one of these, two of these or all of these. It completely and entirely depends upon the situation. Okay, point number two, I'm not going to discuss about mean, median and mode in this video tutorial. We will, you know, save this discussion for our, you know, next couple of tutorials. In this video, will focus only on that what do we mean by average okay read this first statement what does it say it says the average age of the students in a class is 12 years suppose we have a class of strength 30 students the strength of a class is 30 students or is 30 okay this set contains a data and this data tells us the values of ages of all the students in this particular class of strength 30. So the first student's age is 10 years, second student's age is 11 years, the third student's age is 12 years and so on. Okay, you can clearly see that some of them are of 10 years some of them are of 11 years, some of them are of 12 years and so on. But still, we say that the average age of the students in the class is 12 years. This average is the main thing. This average tells us that if we take all these values, so these values are like 10 years and 11 years, then 11 years, some are 10 years, some maybe of maybe maybe of 9 years, then 12 years, again 12 years, 12 years, then 10 years, then 11 years, and so on. Let's say that if we represent these values, that is, you know, these values are the ages of students, then they all will point towards, will point towards a value or these values will represent one thing and if this value can be found then that will be actually average value and this average value is actually representative value or central tendency in this case despite the fact that all the students are of not the same age some are of 10 years some are of 11 years then 12 years and so on but if we want to you know represent our value and that in this case tells you of 12 years so it will give you an idea that okay in this particular class the age of all the students actually revolve around 12 years that is most of the students are roughly of age 12 years that is what is representative value Representative value in this case that is average is 12 years represents you know this set or the data 
or the values that is contained in this set. This value is actually representing this particular set of data. And that's what actually central tendency is. The central tendency, okay, you can quickly think that, okay, if the average age is 12 years, that is a central tendency in this set of data is 12 years. It means that most of the students are of, you know, somewhere around 12 years of age. In this case, the average attendance of a class for the month of December is 90%. Again, assume that the total strength of the class is 30. We are talking for the month of December. Starting from 1st of December till 31st December, we have represented the values of, you know, percent uh, attendance for each day. Let's say this is for the 1st December. This is for 2nd December, this is for 3rd December and so on. This fund value that is 100% is telling you, excuse me, is telling you attendance on 31st of December. Okay, now if I say that the average attendance of a class for the month of December is 90%, then it means that the values contained in this set of data, that is all the attendance for the month of December, they all will be pointing, they all will be pointing towards an average value, towards an average value and that value is actually the average value that will represent this set of data and therefore it will be representative value or central tendency so when we calculate the average I'm not going to explain you how we do this is for the next videos but if we calculate the average it means that we have calculated uh, actually a representative value or the central tendency and what does it tell? It tells us that we have got one value that will represent this set of data. In this case, this set of data contains the values of attendance for each day of the month December. Okay. In this case, if it is 90%, does that mean that on each and every single day of for the month of December, the attendance was 90%? No. You can clearly see that for some days it was 96, for some days it was 95, for some days it was 98, then 100, then 100, then 99, 94 and so on. So if we calculate the average and it points towards this one value that is 90 in this case, then it will give you a rough idea that okay, for the month of December, for this particular class of strength 30, the average attendance, the attendance of this class would have been around 90%. Take this one. In this case, you have the average temperature at this time of the year is about 40 degrees Celsius. The period is 20th of April till 30th of April. And let's say that you have recorded data for this period starting from 2010 and up to year 2019. So this is for the month uh, for the year 2010. This is for the 2011. This is for 12 and finally this one and so on. And this one will be for 019. That is 2019. So we started from 2010. We reached to 2019. For this particular period, we have you know, uh, recorded the temperature for this period starting from 2010 to 2019 and this has been represented in a form of a set. So this set contains a data and this data is values of temperature for this particular period starting from 2010 to 2019. Now, 
does this mean that on each and every for each and every year during this period the temperature was 40 degrees celsius no you can clearly see that uh, in 2010 during this period the temperature was 39 degrees celsius in 2011 it was 40 in 12 it was 41 then 40 then 40 then 40 then 42 then 40 then 41 then 39 it means that for this period starting from 2010 to 2019 it's not like that for each and every year the temperature was 40 degrees celsius but if it tells that the average temperature it means that if we try to calculate the average for this given data that from these values then they all will point towards then they all will point towards a single value that will be the average value for this data or for, for these values and that will be called representative representative value why representative value because that particular value will represent this set of data that is for these values or central tendency So in this case, if it is 40 degrees Celsius, then you can think, okay, if the average temperature for this period, that is from 20th of April, between 20th of April and 30th of April, starting from 2010 to 2019, if the average temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, then it will give you a rough idea that the temperature during this period from 2000 to 2019 will be around 40 degrees Celsius. That is what it's a representative value. This 40 degrees Celsius is a representative value for this set. Or even we can say that this, it is a central calculation of central tendency. That if this data was given to you, and if you are told that this the average for this data is 40 degrees Celsius, then you can think that, okay, the temperature would be somewhere around 40 degrees Celsius. That's the average or the representative value of the central tendency. Let's take this example. This is your truck and it takes all the way, okay, it travels and it finally reaches here, destination. Okay. Suppose this stub uh, truck was initially traveling with let's say 40 km per hour then would have slowed down at this position then again would have you know paced up then again would have slowed here in fact it would have come to a halt here for a few seconds or for a few minutes then would have again started here from here to here and then when finally it would have reached here after so many halts and you know slowing down and all so if it covers 100 kilometer if it covers 100 kilometer and if it takes you know let's say that it takes time it takes time let's say what mm, it takes time let's say 10 hours if it takes time 10 hours okay to travel 100 kilometer it takes 10 hours okay so if you try to calculate the speed if you try to calculate the speed then the speed for in this case it's 100 kilometer okay so if it is 100 kilometer we know that to calculate the speed we use a formula distance upon time right so in this case the distance travel is 100 kilometer and the time taken well it should not be 10 hours it's a very lazy truck then lazy driver then let's say that is this uh, it takes five hours that will be okay so five hours okay so if we divide this you will get 20 kilometers per hour right so if the speed of this truck 
starting from this point and after reaching this destination, if you calculate the speed using this formula, it gives you 20 km per hour. Then it is actually, does that mean that when this truck started, then it traveled constantly at a speed of 20 km per hour? No, you can clearly see that. As I said that at this position, at this position, suppose it was traveling at 40 km per hour, but then it slowed down. At this position, it completely came to a halt, whatever would have been the reason. Then again, number of slowing down, then again pacing up, then coming to a halt, it finally reaches here. So it was, it was not constantly traveling at, at a speed of 20 km per hour. But still we calculated that the speed in this case is 20 km per hour. This is actually the average speed. This is actually the average speed. Some, at some time it, it was turning at 40 km per hour, then at this portion it would have been 0 km per hour. It means that it was not, you know, it was at halt and so on. So this value again gives us the average speed that of all the speeds that this truck took while traveling, the all the values will be pointing towards this particular, this particular value that is the average value. So what this average value tell you in this case, it tells you that your truck was traveling somewhere around 20 km per hour when it started from here and when it reached here. It doesn't mean that it was constantly traveling at 20 km per hour. No, around 20 km per hour. It was somewhere around 20 km per hour. That is what what that what we mean by average or representative value or central tendency.